In this video, we're going to talk about the basic properties of your sine and your cosine. Let's see what happens. So first of all, in this first group of problems, we're supposed to determine the amplitude of each function. Now the amplitude, if I have y is equal to a sine bx, the a is going to determine the amplitude of the problem. You can ignore the b. That's going to come into play later when we start talking about the period of the function. The b value will change the period. Remember that the amplitude is always positive, never negative. So for problem number one, is the amplitude going to be four, guys? No. No. Yeah, be in the video. Be in the video. You're on YouTube now. Um, what's the amplitude going to be for number one? The amplitude is going to be 1 because it's just the invisible 1 is the A value. Um, what about number 2, class? What's the amplitude going to be? Again, 1. Notice it is positive 1. Amplitude cannot be negative. What about number 3? What's the amplitude? 2. What about number 4? Positive 4. Okay, what about number 5? 2. What about number 6? 3. All right, so those are the amplitudes. So for number seven, we're going to sketch the graph, one period from zero to two pi. And then we'll talk about the domain and the range. Um, so you see this four in the front. So you know that the amplitude is going to be four. OK, this is the sine function. So where does the sine function always start off? Anybody? Right, it always starts off at zero, starts off at the origin, all right? So this will be no exception. So I'm going to start off at zero. Um, because the amplitude is four, by the time I get to pi over two, it should be up at four. And then for pi, it'll be back to zero. And at three pi over two, it should be down at negative four. And then two pi, it should be back to zero again. So this is one period of the sine function. <laughs> it's tough to do with an electronic pen sometimes, you guys. OK. Um, let's see. Cooper, what's the domain of this function? Whoops, why did I put a bracket on there? Don't judge me. So negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, Kalani, what's the range of this function? Negative 4. Correct. This went from negative 4 to positive 4. All right, and the order matters. Make sure you put the negative 4 first. All right, so that's it for number 7. Um, now for number 8. The amplitude is 2. Um, let's see. Jordan. Cosine. Where am I going to put my very first dot for this cosine function? At 0, 2, or up. Right. At 0, comma 2. At 2, up. OK? So I'm going, to put, I'm going to put my first dot right here. And then by the time we get to pi over 2, it'll be back to 0. All right, so this is 2 and negative 2. All right, so this is that general pattern of the cosine function. It, go, it starts up high, and then it goes down and back up again. So this is what your cosine function should look like. <coughs> OK, so again, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Um, Adam, what's the range here, buddy? Negative 2 to positive 2. Any questions about number 8? OK. Looking at number 9. OK, Ben. Help me out. Um, what do I do? How do I, how do I graph this? Tell me what to do. Well, since it is sine, 
Mm -hmm. This is number nine. All right, so you start at zero. Start at zero. And it's reflected, so you go down instead of up. That's right. Um, normally, for the sine function, I'm just going to do a quick schematic over here. So the sine function usually starts at zero, and then it goes up, and then down, and back. That's what a regular sine function looks like. Um, so I hear Ben saying, because uh, it's reflected, then I start at zero, but I'm going to go down instead of up. Now, how far down do I go, my brother? Negative two. I need to go down to negative two. Okay, so by the time I get to pi over 2, I should be here. And then, of course, we'll go back through 0. We'll go up to positive 2 and then back to 2 pi. Okay, so my amplitude changed and it's also upside down. So check your answer to number 9. That's what it should have looked like. Again, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is negative 2 to 2. OK, number 10. Scott, tell me what to do. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. So cosine, I like what you're saying. Normally, cosine starts off high. So we've memorized that the cosine normally starts off like that. And then it goes like this. All right, but what are we going to do instead? Right, we're going to start below because of this reflection over the x axis. Okay, so I'm going to start at negative 1 instead of the usual positive 1. All right, so then it should go back to pi over 2. By the time we get to pi, it should be up at 1. And then back to 0. And then by the time we get to 2 pi, it should be back at negative 1. So this is what this function should have looked like. All right. And of course, the domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is from negative 1 to positive 1. Any questions about number 10? All right, number 11. All right, Maya, we're, just tell me where my first point will go for number 11. Um, at, half. at one half, okay? Now, what you can do is change the scale if you want to. Now, it's fine if you want to go halfway in between. But if you wanted to go ahead and call this positive 1 and call this negative 1, that's allowed. So that would make this point right here be 1 half. Okay? And then it, you would go from there. So you would hit 0, and then this would be negative 1 half, and then back to 0, and this would be positive 1 half. All right, so it is okay to change the scale like that. as long as you label it clearly. All right, so the domain is, again, negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, sticking with Maya for one more second, what's the range on this problem? Right, negative 1 half to positive 1 half. OK, um, Matthew, what is 3 over 2 as a decimal? Oh, that's right. I have two Matthews. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right, Matthew G, 1.5. Okay, so where is my very first dot going to go on this picture? Zero. zero, right? Sine function starts at zero no matter what. So we're going to start at zero. Okay, now what will I do? I'm going to go down to negative 1.5. Okay, so if this is negative 1, this is negative 2, I'll go down to negative 
Because of the reflection over the x-axis, that's why we're going down like this. All right? And so positive 1.5 would be here. So this is what number 12 should look like. Any questions about number 12? Domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Range um, should be negative 3 over 2 to positive 3 over 2. Any questions about number 12? All right, looking at number 13. The amplitude is going to be 4. The negative tells me that it's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Um, so here's negative 4, here's positive 4. Normally, cosine starts off up high, but because it's a reflection, it's going to start off down low. All right, so here is what number 13 should have looked like. All right, range negative 4 to positive 4. Any questions about number 13? OK, and this just has that amplitude of 3. Sine function always starts off here at 0. So here's my 3, here's my negative 3. So it's going to go like this. Any questions about number 14? OK. All right, so now we're supposed to write the equation of the function described. So I need, let's see, are we doing f of x or are we doing y equals? OK. OK, Hudson, um, what's your answer to number 15? Okay, so you said 2 sine x. Let's see. Now I need a reflection over the x-axis. So I need, all right, so negative 2 sine x. All right, there we go. Amplitude of 2 and it's reflected over the x-axis. And it's a sine curve. All right, Cooper, give me your answer to number 16. Four cosine curve, so four cosine x. <laughs> All right. All right, great. All right, Col yeah, that's good. So amplitude of four cosine curve, boom. Kalani, what's your answer to number 17? What's the amplitude based on this range? What's the amplitude? Five. Right, the amplitude is five. So how will that show up in the function? All right, so 5 sine x. Now, let's see. We want it to reach its maximum at pi over 2. So is this upside down, or is it normal? It's normal. So we don't need a negative sign in front. All right, for number 18, um, if the range is negative 4 to positive 4, that tells me that the amplitude is going to be 4, all right? Because it's down 4 and up 4. So the amplitude is definitely 4. Now, this is a sine curve. So I know I'm going to have y equals, and there's going to be a 4 involved, 4 sine x. The only question is, do I need a negative sign in front, or do I just leave it the way it is? Um, so let's think about it. 
Normally, it goes like this. So the period of the sine function is 2 pi. And then, so halfway is pi. And then right here, I have my pi over 2. And right here, I have my 3 pi over 2. So normally, the sine function starts off at 0. And it goes up, and then down, and then low, and then back to 0. So this is a regular sine curve. OK? So this is like y is equal to sine ah, x. Now, if I do the reflection over the x-axis, like if I do y is equal to negative sine x, then instead of going high first, it goes low first. So it goes like this, down and then back, and then up and then back. So this green curve is what it looks like when you have a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, now they're mentioning 3 pi over 2. That's over here. So they want the maximum to be reached at 3 pi over 2. So notice that it is the reflection. It's the green curve that has a maximum at 3 pi over 2. So that tells us that it needs to be upside down. It needs to be a reflection over the x-axis. Um, so we're going to need a negative sign right here. All right, so this should be the answer to number 18. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and I will see you on the next video.